What's up everybody, Dr. Ossie Shanks from Sneakers.com. So in this video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about intramuscular injectable medications in psychiatry. I'm going to discuss a little bit about the details of which medications are available in intramuscular formulation and why intramuscular formulation may be valuable in certain cases for certain patient populations. With that said, let's go ahead and get right into the intramuscular medications as the name implies are long-acting injectable medications of common formulas, right? These are common medications that are available in PO or oral formulations. Now, they're usually administered in either the deltoid muscle or the gluteal muscle. It depends on the medications, recommendations, and preference in some cases of the patients, but those are commonly common locations for the injection to be administered. Now, you might be thinking, well, which medications are actually available in this type of formulation? So the medications that are available as long-acting injectables are a combination of the first and second generation dopamine blockers. So these are common medications that you probably have heard of, the first one being aripiprazole, which comes in two separate formulations. So there's an aripiprazole that's known as a Bilify Maintaina, and then there's another one called Aristata. So again, both are Bilify, doesn't really change, but the delivery mechanism is slightly different and the way that the formula is created is slightly different. Then we have a couple of first generation drugs that I wanna talk about, and that would be flufenazine, also known as Perlixin, haloperidol, also known as Haldol, and then the second generation dopamine blockers, things like orlanzapine or Zyprexa, and paliperidone and risperdal. So risperdal consta is, is regular risperidone, uh, formulation, but there's also the active metabolite, which is known as paliperidone, and paliperidone is called Invega Sustaina for the monthly injection. And then there's one that you can get if you've had if you've been successful for several months, you can transition to what's called Invega Trinza, which lasts up to three months. Which brings me to my next point: these medications will last anywhere from two weeks to four weeks in most cases. And in the case of Invega Trinza, it can last up to three months. Now, you might be thinking, well, what's the point of this? Why would, I, why would anyone prefer to have an injection over taking medication daily? Well, that right there might answer the question. Because if you've ever tried to take medication on a daily basis, then you know how difficult it is to remember to take your medication every day. And a lot of patients, in, especially in psychiatry, really struggle with this aspect. And I want to point out that if you think about the medications that are available in the intramuscular formulation, they are primarily medications that are used to treat what we would call serious mental illness, things like bipolar disorder and schizophrenia. And those patients do tend to have a lot of cognitive deficits that also make taking medications on a regular basis difficult. So. One reason might be that you just don't want to remember to take medication every day. The other one might be that you forget a lot and it can be difficult to even remember to take the medication. So why not have a formulation that allows you to just forget about all of that? And that's where these medications really kind of fit in. So clinically, most psychiatrists will tell you that they feel like their patients that use injectable medications actually do better. Now, I knew from running through the research, this really didn't pan out. It wasn't necessarily more effective. But again, where these medications really stand out in their utility is that they help those patients who are having trouble with adherence and who are prone to relapse. So if you're having trouble with adherence and very prone to relapse, and th this might be a solution to that problem. So that's where some of the clinical benefits may be seen. So that's one, one area where I think these, these things really shine and um, can be very, very valuable. And again, it might just be a personal preference for a patient that they don't want to take medication every day. Now the side effects are similar to whatever the oral medication would be, right? So it doesn't really change all that much in terms of side effects. Some people have a misconception that these injectable versions of the medication are somehow have more side effects or are worse than the other medications, it's not true. What, what is true is that they have similar side effect profiles or the same side effect profiles really with a couple of small caveats and I'll point those out for you here. The first one is logistical issues. 
So a person has to be trained to administer these medications. So it has to be a physician or it has to be a nurse. So the patient will have to come into the office to get this medication. They can't take it home with them and give themselves the injection or, some, or have someone do it for them. We prefer to have a trained person do the injection for them to make sure it's occurring properly and that they don't injure themselves because there is some risk, especially with the gluteal injections. So that's one problem. The other problem is a patient who takes this medication for the first time may have side effects. And if they have an acute side effect, it's going to last for a long time because we know these medications are going to remain in that person's body for two to four weeks. So that's an issue. How do we get around that? Very simply, we just t we, we test for tolerability with oral medication. So if I'm going to give Risperdal Consta, the injectable, I'm not going to start by giving someone an injection that's going to last two weeks in their body. I'm going to start by giving them PO or oral Risperdal and see how they do. And if they're not having any acute reactions, then I can think about transitioning to the injectable formulation. So that's how you avoid that major side effect issue and really just create a good environment and good practices is to test tolerability before you inject anything. With that said, I think I've talked about most of the details that I wanted to cover in this video. If you guys have questions or comments about injectable medication, want to know more about it, I'm happy to answer those. And please like and subscribe to the channel. We'll continue to make all content related to psychiatry.